This day is the first day of July in this 2020 year of our Lord. We're grateful to be with you this morning and uh, to give thanks for the blessings of life and a little patch of blue in the midst of an overcast sky, a little cooler temperature in this early morning, and again the promise, what do you get in the summer in the south but uh, thunderstorms later in the day. Uh, today I'd like to talk about the nature of our Christian calling. Uh, the term we often use for uh, our jobs in life is vocation. And I'll uh, take a look at that little word and, uh, and how God works in each of our lives uh, according to his plan. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From the 145th Psalm. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all of your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. Then shall they shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness, and they shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and abounding in great kindness. The Lord is loving in, to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. And then the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. A definition for vocation. The thing you do that was given to you to do in the way you do for the benefit of those you are doing it for. Got that? Vocation. Not to be confused with vacation, taking a break from things, nor uh, evacuation, getting stuff, getting stuff out of your system, is the things you are called by God to do, with gifts and talents God has given you, to which you commit your passion and excitement and energy for the sake of God's creation. The word comes from a Latin term, vacare, meaning calling, which implies a caller, God. God calls more than just pastors. God calls each of us, gives us many gifts, and gives us a lift up by means of the Spirit. Actually, we all have more than one vocation. Our Christian vocation includes our jobs, our roles as family members, our roles as friends, our neighbors, our citizens, and so on. Vocation is all about loving the neighbor and serving God, serving in God's name. A little selection from the, the thoughts of Martin Luther. He reflects on Hebrews 13, 7, which is, Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. In God's sight, the principle stands firm and unshakable. All saints live by the same spirit and by the same faith and are guided and governed by the same spirit and the same faith, but they all do different external works. For God does not work through them at the same time, in the same place, in the same work, or in the sight of the same people. He moves at different times, in different places, in different works, and in different people, but he always rules them by the same spirit and in the same faith. And each one is compelled by the work, place, time, persons, and circumstances previously unknown to him to follow God as he rules and guides him. This is the true knowledge of faith in which all saints are instructed, each one in his own vocation. Maybe a, a foreign concept to us, but that uh, whatever place you are called to in life, to do your life work, 
to use your gifts in whatever job that may be and whatever point you find your life being, and that is where God is calling us to do what God has gifted us to do. My journey to become a pastor and accept a, a calling from God was, was an interesting pathway. I thought first for years that engineering would be my calling and I studied and prepared for that only to find that uh, that was just not my skill set. So part of life I think is finding our, our skill sets and once we've done so to then apply them but to apply them according to what God's purpose is for each of us. We are each blessed with different kinds of talents and gifts. We don't all have the same. That's pretty well scripturally based. But um, the reality is, is that God has a job for every person, no matter their station in life. And Luther went on to speak of the nature of one's calling is at the place right where you live and have your being. To be the Christ as a parent, to be the Christ as a spouse, to be the Christ in the workplace where you're best able and equipped to do that work. To do so in light of concerns and cares for the neighbor that you serve and in being a good reflection of God to those around you. So no matter what your job and position in life, God is speaking and calling to you to be the best person that you can be in that circumstance, to do his good will. And how do we know and understand what that good will is? Is that we search the scripture, we meditate upon the works of Christ, and we look at the life that he lived and the walk that he walked and see how that might be best reflected in the life to which we are each called. So consider well what your calling is and do that which God has gifted you to do with the talents you have been blessed with. And let us pray. The Lord of this day, you give to each of us a place of importance and position right where we live to be your Christ in what we are called and able and empowered by your spirit to do and to be. We thank you for the gift of our work and we pray that we might accomplish it in good ways, in whatever way we are capable of doing so, to help this world become a better place because of our journey within it. Lord, we thank you for this day, for the rains that have nourished the earth in times past, for sunshine that continues to nurture the world and bring forth the fruits of the labors of the earth, that we might be fed and cared for, for providing us with daily bread, the things that are essential and important to the living of life. We pray your continued presence to abide with all who find themselves in harm's way, with those who work in the fields of health care, which are particularly challenging these days, in the lives of people that go about daily living, that they might do so with good common sense, to be mindful of the needs and well-beings of others around them as they protect them from COVID-19 by using good and sensible practices. And we ask that your hand of healing might enfold this world in your love to bring an end to these difficulties that are so troublesome. Be present with our families and our absences one from another. Watch over your church as it strives to find new and different ways of reaching out with your word to those who would hear and help each of us to go forth into each day to be true and good reflections of your love for us as our care is for one another. So be mindful of those petitions and concerns and those for whom we would intercede in these moments of silence. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.